I've just found a way you can use any device as long as it can get on a web page and it's got a camera to be used as a camera for OBS. So you join us here on the iMac where I normally stream from for OBS and I've stumbled across a web page that turns any device with a camera into a wireless webcam. Now this doesn't have to be iOS, you don't have to download an app at all, it could be a old tablet, it could be an iOS device, an Android device, it doesn't matter. So we're on OBS right now and I've got my page here. This is my camera that I use with, which is plugged directly into the Mac. However, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a brand new page, which is gonna use this iPad, which as you can see is wireless. It's not connected to anything. It's just on the same Wi-Fi as my computer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a brand new one here. So let's just go brand new and we're gonna call it OBS Ninja. You can call it whatever you like. Now, the first thing we need to do, of course, is grab a camera source. So this is where the iPad comes in. So all we need to do is go onto the iPad and go to obs.ninja. And you'll see here, basically, you can create a room, you can add your camera to OBS or create reusable invites. And we'll get to that in a minute. We're going to click the middle one and it's add your camera to OBS. It asks if you can have access to the microphone and the camera. So you click allow. And here we are. So you can have it where it's a front facing camera. There's a little bit of a weird thing here where it's saying live broadcast, but backwards. And then if we change it to back camera, you can see there, there's my cabling, that you can see live broadcast and that's it. You've got a couple of tiny little settings here. So you can say whether it's max resolution or smooth and cool, whichever one you want. And you can see there's an audio source. At the moment it's iPad microphone, but if I have an audio source plugged in, I can actually use that as well. What we can then do is if I click start, it then starts with a really, really basic page, and then it says copy this URL into OBS browser source. So we've got that there. So I click copy, that'll be copied onto my clipboard. And then on OBS, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring up browser. And I'm just gonna call it Ninja for now. Now, here it is, and of course it brings up the, you just added a browser source. So we've already copied it into the clipboard, so copy and paste. I should be able to paste from my iPad. There we go. So obs.ninja. Now, I know the dimensions of this, so what I need to do is put this in. Which in 20 by 10, 80. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow to control the audio by OBS as well. Then scroll down a little bit here, and what I want to do is refresh the browser when the scene becomes active. So if we do that, then what that means is if I was to close it down and then come back up again with the same login, it would refresh. So let's click OK. Let's see what happens. Now it takes a second, and there we are. We've now got this connected. Now just to show you that this is working, and what I'm going to do is I keep looking at the camera here high, and just to show you that this is working, I'm just going to... There you go. Now there's a little bit of a delay, obviously, uh, because it's using a browser to send the camera through the internet back to my OBS over here, grabbing it from the internet, and then we're going to stream it out. So there will be a little bit of a delay, but let's just go back to my main page. And there we go. You've got my main page here with all my subscribes and everything else, but it's here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this in. So let's just add the browser in here, just to show you that it works. Let's bring Ninja back, add an existing, add Ninja. Now it takes a second to load up, so what I'm gonna do is, there we go, I'm gonna bring it back in and I can scroll it down. So now what we've got is we've got a picture in picture, hi. There you go, and you can see what kind of delay. Now this is all going through the internet, it's not going just through my browser. So this could actually be on the other side of the planet. Imagine you've got a friend who you want to do an interview with or you know, someone you want to do an interview with. You're not being able to get into contact because of lockdowns or anything like that. This is a fantastic option. Now on this page here, you can see at the bottom, there's a couple of things here. So we can chat to each other. There's a little chat option here. Welcome to obs.ninja. You can send text messages directly to the connected peers from here. And you need to enter the details. There's a microphone. So as I talk louder, that goes green. There's a little I, which means turn the camera off. So you can turn the camera off if you want to, and then turn it back on. You can see it 
turns it on and off there. And then in the settings, you can actually just change the settings. So let's say we were talking about something, but then the guest wants to show you their back camera and they can just change that over. And there we go, there's the back camera and they can move it back to the front camera. This is fabulous because it means any device, as long as you've got a camera and you've got a uh, internet connection, it'll work. So if you want to interview someone, but you want to use OBS, you don't want to use a different service, this is your answer. This is the way to do it. Now, the really clever part for musicians is if you were to plug in an audio interface like a Focusrite 2i2 or any audio interface like you've got a looper or anything like that, you'd be able to pick it on here under the audio source. So at the moment, the audio destination is default and you have to close it before you do it. But you can say audio source is there and when you plug it in, it should show as the other source as opposed to the iPad microphone. Now, what's the downside? The downside is you can't really change what the camera is doing. You can't set things like the ISO. You can't set the focus or anything like that. It just hits it and that's it. However, as long as you've got enough light, it works. It works really, really well. And if you've got any questions about it, then the guy who created it is called Steve. Um, and he's got basically his own email. So you can basically steve at seagun.com email uh, if it breaks. There's also a support page for it. So if you want to have a look at reddit.com forward slash r forward slash OBS ninja for support uh, that basically contains the guides and some advanced settings as well. I just want to give them a shout out because it works. Now I've been playing around with a couple of different things, but you need to download apps. You need to have a login, you need to sign in, and then you need to make sure it connects via Wi-Fi to your device, which then takes more stress actually on your computer. This is just pulling a web page basically that's being updated constantly and the computer can just pull that you can pull six of them if you wanted to if you wanted to pull six from six different places around the world so you could invite people in so let's do that instead so what we're going to do is I'm going to close this down on the iPad I'm going to hang up bye bye now this time what we're going to do is going to invite someone so we've got create reusable invite so if you do that what you can do is you can give the media source a name you can generate a link and you can say advanced options unlock bit rate at 20 megabits per second uh, force the default microphone, hide the screen share option. So you can control this if you want to, and you're in control of what the guest does with the actual room. Now there's some documentation if you want to do a create a reusable invite, and this is really useful. So you could just use this once and then send it out on an email to someone. So click that link and then we can actually do the recording or live stream and let's bring them in. So then on OBS, you just create a new scene with I've got this main scene right now, and if I put my chat back up and everything else, and then what we could do is we can go over to the OBS Ninja one, and then that would bring them in. You don't have to call it that. You can call it whatever you like. If you want to support the page a little bit further, you can do. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com. Buy Me A Coffee keeps this channel alive, and there's now also a monthly and annual subscription version where you get a couple of perks as well. Go and check them out. So what do you think? OBS Ninja's pretty cool. You could send it to anyone, and then they could come in on your live stream. Now, bear in mind with OBS Ninja, if you're using it out in the real world, so you're using your phone, uh, then obviously it's going to be using your data, whether that's 4G or even now 5G. So make sure you've got enough data to cover yourself before you start getting charged anymore by your network. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. The great thing, as I say, no app. It can go on any device, whether it's iOS or Android. You don't have to log in, and all you need is a device that's got a camera and can access the internet. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.